Scream 4. Who gives a fuck what year it came out? What's up, you guys? This is Scott 86, and tonight we're going to be talking about one of the shittiest horror films that I've ever seen. It's pretty fucking bad. So, tonight, we're going to bash on Scream 4. Okay, so when this shitty fuck fest of a fucking movie, if you want to even call it that, starts off, it's just your standard every fucking Scream movie beginning where it starts off with a phone call. We got these two chicks, and they're about to watch a scary movie. Of course, that's how every fucking Scream movie has to start out, right? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. I hate scary movies. It's just the same old shit, you guys. You even get lines like this. You hang up on me and I'll cut through your neck until I feel bone. Yeah, how original. So just like in every other fucking Scream movie, after they get called to death, they decide to ignore the phone when they get a knock at the front door. And the girl opens the door and there's nobody there. It says I'm not outside. I'm right beside you. <laughs> Ghostface even poses at the camera after he kills this bitch. Then when the other girl goes to run away out the front door, another ghost face pops up and slits her fucking throat. Psych! This isn't the real beginning. This is basically just the beginning of the movie Stab 6 inside the movie Scream 4. Then we cut to these two other chicks. They start to argue about how the movies suck and they're too meta and the whole franchise is shit. Basically describing the Scream franchise at this point, it turns out to be a fucking fake out again. What the fuck? This movie just doesn't know when it wants to fucking begin. And then we cut to two more chicks. They're just doing the same old shit. One of them's really into horror movies and the other one's not. Now, we get a phone call. What do you know? Who would have guessed it? It's fucking Ghostface on the other end. Hello? Who is this? Marnie? Is this just gonna be another fake out or is this actually the real fucking movie? Like, this movie's already fucked with me twice. You know, I don't know what to fucking believe anymore. I don't know what's real and what's not. Shit! It's just her fucking friend, upstairs, on the phone, pretending like she's Ghostface. Okay, so this movie better get better. That's all I can fucking say. And then she hears her friend being brutally murdered on the other end of the phone. I don't see why you get off on this. <laughs> Marnie? Marnie? But at the rate this fucking movie's going, it could just as well just be another fucking fuck around ass gotcha moment, you know, like just a big old fucking sham. That's all this movie is. But let's continue. Marnie or Mari or whatever comes bursting through the fucking window. We see Ghostface and the chase is on. So let's see if after he kills this other bitch, if it's really real. If it's another fake out, I'm done with this fucking review. This shit is fu- And then just like that, before you know it, this bitch gets murdered violently too. Would you imagine that? Oh, and also I gotta go ahead and talk about the way she gets murdered. You guys remember the scene from Scream 1 where Tatum gets killed by the garage door? She, get, she gets killed in the garage door? Well, we're gonna sorta of try to remake that, but it's not gonna be as cool or as good, and the effect's gonna look like trash, and here you go! Remember this scene, guys? But it's redone. Uh. Yeah, it's just not impressive, not very creative at all. Let's move on. That's actually the real beginning of the film. Like, that actually really happened in the movie. It's not just another fucking fake out stabs, stab eight sequence. You know, this is actually really happening in the film. But, like I said, you don't even give a shit about the characters, so who gives a fuck? I mean, the movie doesn't even give a fuck about itself. Listen to this wacky-ass, fucking, whack-ass, like, 
intro music they got going on here. Yeah, this movie just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Or the franchise just doesn't give a fuck about itself. It's shitting on itself right now. You can see that the town of Woodsboro just completely celebrate the fucking gruesome murders. They literally have ghost face decorations all over the town. Like, what? And then we see David Arquette or Dewey Riley roll out of the bed. Courtney Cox or Gail Weathers or Gail Riley, I guess. And then we see Dewey hollering at some chick for speeding down the road. And the chick turns out to be one of the other throwaway shit-ass characters that we don't give a fuck about. This is where we meet three more boring characters. Wherever she went, people died. Other people. It was never her. I mean, Stab is the wrong franchise for her. It should be Final Destination. Jill, Sydney's little cousin, gets a call from Ghostface. Hello? Hello, Jill. Can't stand Jill. Uh, Jenny, is this you? What's your favorite scary movie? Okay, who is this? And then the stupid chick in the back seat says, That was original. That was original. Unlike this fucking movie, which isn't original at all. That was original. And then, out of nowhere, this car just comes flying down the road right in front of him and almost fucking hits him. <laughs> Probably would have been a better film. Shit. And now it's back at school where we get more fucking self-awareness of what time period we're in. Oh, this is Hall Pass with Robbie Mercer. Here with the luscious Olivia. Don't look at my tits. I have a mind, Morris. This movie just really loves to rehash shit over and over. Here is my Woodsboro Massacre anniversary question. What is your favorite scary movie? Oh god, this movie fucking sucks. Then we get Creepy Boyfriend, right? Because all these Scream movies have to have a fucking creepy boyfriend that could just possibly be the killer. We've literally seen this shit so many times before. Right after he disappeared. Trust me. Oh, hi, Trevor. Stupid. And then old nerd camera boy comes up and asks fucking Trevor what his favorite scary movie is, and we get this really fucking cringeworthy, corny ass scream. What is your favorite scary movie, man? I'll show you. <laughs> Woof. Ugh, yeah. That's painful to watch. And then Gail and Sydney reunite, and it's just bleh. Gail, I'm glad you came. Congratulations, Sydney. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I know you can get one. <laughs> and that's whenever Dewey comes rushing in with a new lead on the murders. Apparently, the phone that was linked with the murder was traced back to this bookstore for some reason. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Damn. Okay, it's now official crime scene. Let's lock it down. So essentially, Sydney is the target yet again. Why is she the target again? Well, it's a Scream movie and what would it be without Sydney being the fucking prime target of the entire film, right? They can't do anything different. They can't be original. They can't come up with new fucking ideas. They just gotta keep rehashing the same fucking tired ass plot every film. It would have been nice if this movie would have just done something different for once and just be its own thing instead of just trying to be a carbon copy literally of the first three films. Like, would it really have hurt to try something different? I guess so, huh? Your lemon squares taste like ass. Yeah, this whole fucking movie tastes like fucking ass. And then we get, yet again, another fucking remake rehash scene from the fucking first movie where they're trying to recreate the same fucking scene where Billy comes in Sydney's window, you know, and kind of scares her a little bit. Yeah, look at this shit. Hey, cool. It's okay, it's just me. Relax, relax, it's just me. What the hell are you doing here? There are cops right up front. Can't you come up with any original ideas movie instead of trying to like 
pull nostalgia from every fucking corner of this goddamn film? What? Nothing, you just, uh, you remind me of, uh... <laughs> Same fucking thing, but just not good. So, the movie is already funny enough as it is because it's so fucking terrible. The movie's still gotta have a comic relief, right? So you got the goofy cop duo going on here. And uh, they're not funny. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. It's just unnecessary comedy that the movie doesn't need. Like, I'm already trying to take the movie fucking serious. Throwing a fucking comedian in there and trying to make the movie funny in some spots is just not gonna help at all. Oh boy. This movie's just really trying to throw everything at you. It's like, hey, look, we got a sexy bitch on the screen, so try to ignore all the cringy shit going on and just forget about it. Look at her titties. So they try to prank her and she's just not falling for it. He thinks it's you. He thinks it's you. <laughs> the short haired, blonde haired chick gets a fucking phone call and it says Trevor's calling, but it's not motherfucking Trevor. And then she gets murdered across the street from him. That's not fucking you didn't expect your little prank call to go this way, did you? No! you stupid fucks. As cliche as this whole entire film's been so far, I definitely didn't see that one coming. So, good job, you guys. You got one. Yeah, that's some brutal shit. Okay, so that was pretty good. And then Ghostface comes bursting into the house where Sidney, Jill, and Kirby are and pretty much tries to attack them all and he's not very successful because he's like he always is they don't, they don't ever fucking make the character better you know he's always this clumsy fuck tripping over his own shoelace you know falling downstairs he's just he sucks you know he's not a good efficient killer you can't make this dude a little more fucking menacing and like scary Sydney literally like fucking karate kicks him in his face this shit is fucking insane and then for some fucking reason, Gail teams up with the two nerdy guys from the AV club or whatever, you know? It's like, why? Then we get another, like, could this person be the killer scene where Sydney basically fires her assistant and it leads you to think, uh, well, shit, maybe she could be the killer. But then that theory is quickly put to fucking bed. Because out of nowhere, Ghostface shows up in a parking garage and just shanks this bitch. So Sydney's sitting in on Cinema Club. I'm sorry, it's not the AV Club. It's called Cinema Club. And that's whenever they figure out that there's going to be a party tonight. Where they're doing this thing called Stabathon, And they just play all the Stab movies in a row. In remembrance of the fucking anniversary of the Woodsboro murders. Of course, they gotta have a party scene. And then we get another retread of the first movie where Gail's hiding cameras all over the party. Yeah. And then Gail is attacked by Ghostface. And also, Gail gets the shit stabbed out of her. And she lives because they can't do anything new. Oh, and then the two buddy cops get brutally murdered. It's real key. They try to make one of the cops' deaths, like, comedic, and it just makes the movie even worse. Fuck Bruce Willis. No, no. Not fuck Bruce Willis. Fuck this fucking movie, okay? Oh yeah, that's right, and this uh, chick gets stabbed through a fucking door. Yeah, that's how this movie makes me feel, like I'm getting stabbed in my back through a fucking door. And then we got a fucking blog that just turns into a live murder. That's better. <laughs> Again, they try to make the dude's death comedic. I'm gay. I'm gay. If it helps. It's supposed to be a scary movie. Not, hey, I'm being stabbed. This is hilarious. Then Rory shows up and he's all bloody and Kirby's not letting that motherfucker in because 
She doesn't know if he's the killer or not. I mean, what does this remind you of? He did it, Cindy! Please, I didn't do it, he did it, please! Please, Cindy, oh! Fuck you, bro! Please! Oh, God. And then we have another fucking remake rehash scene again. It's like this movie had no original ideas. Like, all they did was just take shit that they've done before and just redo it again. Then we get this big twist reveal as Kirby's trying to save Rory. Uh, he stands up and he pulls this giant knife out and stabs the shit out of her. He's one of the fucking killers and he has been this entire time. And then we come to find out that Jill, yeah, that's right, Sydney's little cousin, little five foot two bitch, is the other killer. And her and Rory Culkin have been running around this whole time murdering people. But the only thing that bothers me about that, and uh, besides everything in this fucking film, is the killer throughout the entire movie so far has looked like a full grown man. I mean, he's clearly taller than both Jill and Rory's characters. Like, what the fuck? So, you're trying to tell me that whenever Jill, little tiny Jill, puts on the mask and she puts on the scream suit, she magically, like, grows a foot and a half or two feet? Like, what the fuck is going on here? And then we get another fucking, hey, you guys, remember scream scene. Check it out. Attention. Oh, what do we have behind door number three, Sydney? Daddy. Whoa, hold it. Speaking of which. Yep. Mind you of anything? Yeah. This whole fucking movie reminds me of the first movie. And that's this movie's big payoff, is that it's not the boyfriend the whole time that's the psycho killer murderer. You know, it's his scornful ex-girlfriend and she's angry because Sydney came back into town and basically stole her spotlight her whole life and her boyfriend dumped her to go fuck some other chick so now she's gonna go out and murder everybody you know and have her revenge B-O-O-H-O-O -O -O. who gives a fuck scream for okay who gives a fuck scream one did it Scream did it! There didn't need to be a number fucking two or three or four. I know Scream was meant to be a trilogy, but okay, make it a trilogy. There didn't need to be any more. There is a scene right here that is pretty fucking cool. She shoots the dude's fucking dick off. Ah! Holy shit! Ah! You peaked in high school, motherfucker. Ah! Ah! Oh shit! I shot him in the dick! You shot me in the dick! And then if blowing off his fucking cock and balls wasn't enough, she puts one right in his fucking head, too, and that's the end of, a uh, Boyfriend Guy stabs Sydney and assumes that she's dead. But she's not. So then, after a comedic-ass, slapstick-ass, throw yourself around the fucking house and try to make yourself look like the victim, you know, fucking scene. Yada, yada, yada. Everybody looks dead, so they take him to the hospital. And we find out that the girl Jill survived, and she's just playing victim whenever Dewey tells her that Sydney lived and she didn't die. Only think Sydney just might make it. What? I, but I saw Trevor kill her. And that's whenever Dewey leaves the room. Little 5 2 bitch gets up and goes looking for Sydney. She finds the room that Sydney's in. She tries to strangle her, and a big brawl ensues where they're just rolling around and it's a really cringy girl fight. For it all to basically end with Jill having everybody at gunpoint because she beats the fuck out of Dewey with a bedpan and just literally treats him like a bitch. This little bitty ass chick is just outdoing everybody in this movie. Sydney sneaks up behind her. She literally electrocutes her and that's the end of the fucking movie. Wait, hold on a second. Aren't they forgetting about something? Like, something really important here? This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Well, I guess they're not gonna do that. Oh.
Yeah, they did it. Of course they did it. They had to throw one more in there at you, just right before the end. Do I recommend this movie? Fuck no. Fuck no. You tried the entire film, and that's all the movie does, is just, it's callbacks and throwbacks and homages and remakes and, you know, it's just all this stupid shit that just clutters the film up and just makes it like a giant dumpster fire, in my opinion, and it's not even worth a fucking watch, honestly. Stay as far away from this motherfucking movie as you can because it's not worth your time. I mean, if you want to watch a Scream film, just watch the first one. Two and three are okay, but the first one is the only one that really mattered or needed to be. But, you know, money. They wanted to make more of it, so they cranked out two and three, and, and then this piece of fucking garbage. They literally just did it to make money. That's all it seems like to me, just a giant cash grab, and it fucking sucks. Don't get me wrong. Nev Campbell, her performance is amazing. She's a good actress, period. And the same thing for David Arquette and Courtney Cox. Like, they reprised their roles respectfully, but it wasn't their fault that the movie was just horribly written. The script and the screenplay are just terrible. It's just a big hot mess, and it just didn't need to be. I can't really say any more on this movie, you guys. I am tired of talking about this fucking shit-ass, motherfucking, broken-down, bitch-slapped-ass movie. Don't watch it. It's not worth your fucking time. Sydney says it best. You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Scream 4. Fuck it. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Monster Mash. Oh, let's get a look at it, man. Not